Hey, what's up everybody and welcome to another AIP Tutorials. In this lesson, we're gonna be creating this realistic clock animation. Now this is a neat system because we can have a clock going at a normal speed or we can speed it up. But another thing we can do is actually reverse time. Now this whole thing is controlled by a time expression. As usual, the project files will be available to download. I'll leave a link in the description to it. All right, so in your assets folder, you're gonna to wanna to bring in your clock layers. So here we have a clock base, the hour hand, the minute hand, and the second hand. Let's just select all of them and bring them into a new composition. We wanna make sure that it's not sequence layers. Single composition, uh, use dimensions from the clock base. And let's change the duration to, let's say, five minutes just for demonstration purposes. So now we have our clock. Let's bring this up fit to 100%. Now I tried to get it as in the middle as I possibly could, but I kind of failed. Anyway, so let's organize these. Actually, let's turn off all our hands and just look at the clock base. Now we want to get this directly in the middle. And as you can see, it's a little off. So to do this, we're gonna click on the title action safe down here. It's already turned on for me right now, but we're also gonna hit command R to bring up the rulers. So let's do this. Let's drag something down here and drag a guide down here. Now you wanna make sure, you wanna go down to view and make sure lock guides is not checked on. Otherwise you won't be able to move these, but you wanna just get them pretty much in the center here on this crosshair. Now, if we zoom in all the way, we can actually, oh, it's a little bit off. Hold on a second, I have an idea. Yeah, let's change this to 1916. Just put another pixel in there, why not? All right, so now we can move this to dead center and dead center. And let's actually move our clock base layer around. I have the move tool selected, which is just the V key. And I'm gonna use the arrow keys on the keyboard to kind of just shift it around till it's about center. Yeah, something about there. All right, so the first thing we're gonna do is get our second hand in order. Now for this, you wanna make sure all the center points of your layers are directly in, well, the, the center. For our second hand, let's hit R to bring up the rotation. And we're gonna alt click on the stopwatch. We're gonna type in time times, and we're gonna do a bigger number because we want this to spin a little faster. This way we can actually see if it's got any wobble to it, if it needs to be adjusted. So we'll do like 100 and we press play. Let's make this a thousand actually. And we, if we press play, we can see it's got a little bit of a wobble to it. Let's move this over just a little bit to the left, right rather, and up a little bit. Now let's hit Y so we can, whoop, actually, now we want to go up to view and hit lock guides so we don't accidentally select them. So let's take our center point, which is no longer in the center. And if we hit Y, we can bring up the tool that can move it. Now, if you have snap two guides, this will snap right into the center. Now let's replay this and see if we fixed our wobble. It's a little bit better. All right, let's get this pretty much uh, where it's gonna be in the center here. And let's hit V to get bring up the move tool again. And then Y, and that'll bring it to the center. Let's play that, see if we fix our, whoop. Let's bring that back up to a thousand. Uh, you know what I'm gonna say? I'm gonna say that's close enough for the tutorial purposes. Um, if you wanna get more uh, precise with it, it's, it's pretty good. It's not wobbling as much as it was. All right, so now that we have the second hand all set up, the minute and hour hand are gonna be pretty easy. So let's get rid of our time. Just delete it. I mean, we can come back to it. All right, so let's turn on our minute hand. And as you can see, it's, it's kind of sticking out a little bit. So we're just gonna Boop, 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 boop that down a little bit. Hit Y on the keyboard to bring up the, the anchor point tool. All right, and let's turn on the hour hand. And let's just, let's just pull that down just a little bit. All right, hit Y, make sure that that is on our center point right there. All right, so now we're ready to actually get this thing moving and to rig this up. But first, I wanna organize these. I'm gonna have the second hand on the top, 
and the minute hand is going to be under the hour hand. There we go. Simple. Setup. Done. All right, so now we're going to Alt-click on the rotation for the second hand again to create our expression. Now we want to do time times. Now the math for this, we need to figure out how many seconds are in a full rotation of 360 degrees. The answer is 60. So what we do is we can just do 360 divided by 60. We can just put in the answer for that, which is 6. So time times 6 will make this rotate pretty much how a second hand is going to rotate. So let's go to one second. Look at that. We're at one second. Two seconds. Uh, three seconds. Boom. It's working as planned. So now let's take our minute hand. Let's work on that. Let's hit R to bring up the rotation. Alt click on the stopwatch. But this time we're going to take the pick whip and we're going to whip it, whip it good to the rotation. But now this will be moving at the same speed. What we actually want to do, because there's 60 minutes in an hour, let's divide that by 60. So whatever rotation this is at, this is going to divide it by 60 and create our minute hand movement. Now let's actually, let's actually set this up right. Duration, I'm going to put at 5 minutes, not 5 seconds, and hit OK. Oh, and we also need to take all of our layers and drag them out a bit. All right, so now I'm going to go to one minute here. Boom, we're at one minute. Two minutes? Oh, we're at two minutes. Now what happens at four minutes and 30 seconds? Is it going to be at four minutes and 30 seconds? Yeah, cool. Now we have our minute hand moving at the speed that we want it. All right, so now let's work on the hour hand. We're going to hit R on the keyboard to bring up the rotation. Alt click on the stopwatch. We're going to pick whip this one to the minute hand this time. And at the end, instead of doing divided by 60, there's 12 hours on this clock as I'm, I'm pointing to the screen, which you, you can't see, uh, you, you dummy. So we're going to divide this number by 12. And this will move at the speed of an actual hour hand. Now what's cool from here, in order to speed this up or reverse it, we just have to change this number right here. Now remember, six is the realistic number, so we can put anything else, 600, and we have this. Now here's the thing, to go in reverse time, all we have to do, is set a little minus sign in front of that 600, and now we're going in reverse. All right, so basically that's it, that's the effect, that's the what I wanted to show you. All right, so now that we got the basic effect, let's, uh, let's add some realism to this. So one thing I want to do is actually turn on motion blur. So if we toggle switches and modes over down here till we get to this screen, we can see our motion blur. So we can just turn that on for the second hand. And if you want, you can go into composition, composition settings and go to advanced tab and you can actually control your shutter angle and shutter phase and all that stuff. So if we set this to 180, we're going to have a more of a motion blur. I like to keep this at mainly 90 and minus 90. So now we have motion blur on top of here. Now something else I want to add is some shadow. So what I'm going to do is select all of our hands and I'm going to pre-compose them. I'm going to hit shift command C to pre-compose and we'll call this hands. Just hit enter. So let's duplicate our hands layer. Let's name this bottom one hands shadow. Now on top of this, we're going to add some effects. Let's add a fill. That's under generate fill. We're going to add that to our shadow. Now I actually want to make this probably one of our darker numbers here. So I'm going to select the five and we're going to make that about the same tone as this. Maybe just a little bit darker, but we're going to have some of that color in there and that's important. So we're going to darken that just a little bit. And what we're going to do, make sure we have our move tool selected. So hit V. We're going to just use our arrow keys and we're going to offset this layer and move it up, down. We'll move it down. Up. No, I like up. Move it over and up. So what we're going to do, if we hit toggle switches and modes again, we're going to get to our modes, our blending modes. So I'm going to set this, normally like I would set it to multiply and all that, but we're going to set this actually to overlay. So now you can see we have a shadow. But what I also want to add is a fast box blur. That's on their blur and sharpen fast box blur. Let's add that to our shadow. And let's just bump up the radius a little bit till we get something that looks nice. 
There we go. A nice soft shadow. I'm going to put it at about, about seven. And I think setting it to overlay really helps uh, uh, make it look more realistic than just setting it to, let's say, like multiply. And there you go. Now we have our shadow. Now the reason for pre-composing our hands and then duplicating that and putting the shadow on a separate layer is now all we have to do is go into our hands, select the second hand, and we can double tap U to bring up the expression, and we can change this to whatever, 1000, I don't know. And we can just go back to our main composition here, and it will automatically update to follow the hands. Well, there you have it. A nice little short tutorial about using the time expression and some more creative ways you can use it. Now, speaking of that, in the future, I am planning on creating a whole series called Expression Extravaganza. Now, this will be a series that will go through all the different expressions that I use constantly and the different little tricks and stuff that you can use with them to make them even more powerful. So if you want to get notified when that comes out, make sure you subscribe, hit the bell, do all this stuff that YouTube makes you jump through hoops for to actually get um, notifications for the channels you subscribe to. All right, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.